then, you know, this is a great little wing to play around with. As you can see, my one's been dinged and bashed about a bit. In actual fact, this is the second one of these I bought. Because the first one, while I, while I was learning, um, I was learning out on a, a, a field, which was like strawy type stuff, so it'd really get damaged as it hit the deck. And, but I've decided I want to put this back together again. Um, and I'm going to use INAF, and so we can go over the whole, the whole INAF setting and everything and go over that together. But first of all, I'm going to talk to you about the other bits that are on here. Now, as you can see here, we've got some, uh, we've got some uh, servos, some one on each side for these ailerons. And the nice thing about these, these are metal gear servos. Now, I would say, just for the sake of it, get metal gear, you're less likely to strip. Um, what's going on? These Emacs 2 things are pretty good, 9 gram servos. Doesn't mean so that should be any type of advert or anything, it's not. Uh, now, when you put them in, you want to make sure you get one of these little like servo setting things where uh, you can get it to the middle. They're pretty cheap. I got myself this thing. And the reason why I got this as well is because uh, it comes with some bulbs, three of them. Discharge your battery for you. A lot better than leaving it charged. You know, sometimes you might come back, you've got a couple of packs left that haven't been discharged, and you're not going to go out for a few more days, weather, whatever. Uh, so you got this charger and having one of these with this uh, bulb system that goes on for discharge is absolutely fantastic but getting it to be able to set your servos is uh, is primary sort of job. So you just set them up so they go on to 1500. Uh, we'll get some servers doing a separate thing if necessary. But you go on to 1500 and you're going to make sure that uh, this thing is sticking as close to being 90 degrees with this as possible and the same on the other side, they're not going to be matched absolutely but that doesn't matter because you've got some adjustment here uh, onto your aileron to make sure you get that sort of straightish. When you imagine this thing's flying, you might want to, and I do, I always have just a little tiny bit of uplift on my ailerons. About the width of the, the end of the aileron, you can't see from there can you? But about this much of width, the width of this, yeah, oh no. The width of this uh, part, the width of this, above the width of this. So it just sits above, and that gives me enough, uh, it, it, just so it's got a little tiny bit of its own uplift. The amount of mill that you want to be able to travel up and down, about 12 mil in each direction. But you'll probably set, set that up within your software, just to make sure you've got those limits. I never bother, um, because what I do is, because I use INAV, I just select which is what I'd advise anyone to do. I just select the closest size to frame. Um, and for me, I think it's the Z840, because this is 900 mil, the 840 is 840 mil. And so I use that setup for pig tuning and everything. I don't have to mess about. And I know that as long as I put a little tiny bit of uplift on here, a little bit of uplift on this one as well, uh, for itself naturally as it's sat, I can just throw this up in the air. None of that uh, auto launch uh, malarkey. I mean, do it if you want to, but you know, I prefer just to launch it from yourself. Yeah. You know, it's, it's no biggie. As soon as you get your little, your little knack, your little swing of launching, uh, then it's then it's just as easy like that. And you've got to get your manual uh, in a way set up before you start relying on auto launch and bits and pieces. So just to have it go up in the air from it. Straightforward setup, you don't even have to bother with any of this, you know, to start off with. You can just have all this stuff up, have this in here, have your servo set up, have your ESC set up, of course, um, coming out of here and your servo set up on here, uh, your, your receiver, and if you want your FPV gear in there, start off. I would, if I were you, because you might find it easier to carry on flying FPV rather than line of sight in front of you. But you're going to get round to either, you're going to get round to those anyway, because because uh, it's fun. Line of sight is just as fun as uh, FPV. Nah, I mean it can be, but FPV is pretty cool too. They're both cool. So yeah, so then you can just get this set up. Literally, you just get it, look at the same mine. Mine just goes on Velcro. And that's it. And that's been fine. I've never had any issues with Velcro doing, you know, rolls and flips, all this sort of stuff. Never had any issues. I do mine pretty much everything straight out of the box. Like I say, I find the closest match and I rely on INAV and them great guys who have been setting up and doing the uh, 
Right enough. And it, you, you can't just use INF and think, oh, that's going to be it. I mean, you can, and you can get on with um, the way it flies. Now, I'm one of them people that if I play on a game, I don't adjust all the controls to what I'm used to. I just have to get used to it the way it is, and that's how I do it. This is how I do these. If it's a little tiny bit off, well, who cares? As long as it's still fun, right? You can land it, you can throw it up, and it comes down, and you can still scream it around the place. So, yeah, so for setting up those, that, uh, this is a 1200, 1 1.2 watt craziness. It's a 32 mil size, so it can just go in there, it doesn't matter. I've took some formal coating on there, but I'll put some black tape over here anyway to cover it. I'll cut a hole in the tape uh, and that'll stay in there and just cover that up. So, because when it lands, this is, this is what I'm building this for, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to train myself how to uh, catch it rather than let it land because I won't go and fly this because the wet the ground's always wet at the moment and as soon as you have your first flight you land it water goes in seeps into this weighs it down it, you know, it doesn't do very good in here anyway it's no good any of it going on the electrics so what I want to do is learn how to uh, fly this into myself to catch it and so that's what I'm setting up for for this because I have another package here that once I've got used to doing it like that, I got another package here, but I can't wait to get into. Look at that, see what that says it is? Yeah, yeah, baby. That's all the pilot. That's all the pilot gear going to go on that one. It'd be nice if I could just uh, undo them, pull them and pull them out as and when I wanted them. Eh? Maybe I'll do something. I'll fit some sort of uh, slugs or whatever they call them. So just pop together on these and just have some coming off on both of them so I can just take them out easy, swap them over, fly all the pilot fly on it. Yeah, why not? But the first bit first is setting this up. So like I say, setting up your your servo is dead easy really. Um, making sure you've got enough movement here, dead easy, not too much or you know, depends when you're in manual you're gonna get a lot more. Uh, but that's what makes manual really good fun. So we're going to need a receiver, two receivers. We're going to need a uh, receiver, should we call it a transceiver these days, I suppose, if it's sending telemetry back, that's a transmitter. And it's receiving as well, so that'd be a transceiver. And we also need a receiver for GPS, so we're going to put a receiver in here, receiver in for GPS here. Um, I'm going to use this, uh, this small one, even though I do prefer, I'm not going to lie to you, I prefer these, they get more GPS, they get them quicker, and uh, they seem to, uh, I just prefer the bigger antenna job is on this lighter frame this is u blocks this is also u blocks and you can see that on the back there at all oh it? there you go but they're both they're both u blocks so they're both they go they're both good ones and that's going to go in there as you can see this sort of stuff has been on it before that's not going to go in there like i say that's going to go in there like this and again, there'll just be tape over it. There'll be tape over this with a bit cut out for the antenna, but that's already got like a heat shrink rubbery type coating on it anyway. Uh, so maybe I can just cut the tape gently around. I just don't want any moisture getting underneath into this. Uh, like I say, it's gonna be one of those, I will, I am gonna start flying it, train myself to catch it, and you, you're gonna be able to watch that. Because I wanna be able to catch it so then I can, um, I've got to make sure that a bit of bloody wet grass doesn't stump play because what happens is the first landing on this, I'm pretty sure I just said it, but I'm going to say it again, the first landing gets a load of moisture on it and it doesn't fly again very well after that. Um, it gets a bit heavier, you get stuff, you know, coming, it doesn't fly again heavy. What I am going to do on it though, is I'm going to stick this 4K camera on it, even though I don't really use the 4K part of it. Uh, maybe I will inside this. Um, you know, because it can, you know, well, we're just going to see, we'll see, but I'm going to take this off here, I think it's wasted on here in a way, um, and take it off here, and fit this into this, and hopefully be able to fit it in such a way I can protect it a bit for those uh, impacts, but this is going to be sat behind this, see that's the great thing about flying one of these, and this, um, and aeroplanes, and I'm going to say it like this because this is what happens. The public, us, we get programmed. We get conditioned. And what happens is when you start telling people about how bad drones are, everybody's on the lookout for these. And 
I hate to use this terminology or this, this name, but the Karens of the world, male and female, are into policing you. And so if they see you with one of these, they're more likely to want to try and police you, as in one of these, because they've not been conditioned off the telly. The telly hasn't told them that the Mavic, uh, not the Mavic, that the Phantom, because that's the one that they normally use, is a drone, and drones are bad. Bad connotations, drones go around killing people. We know that, and they kill a lot of civilians. Drones are bad. And uh, I think that's why they've decided to take away from UAV. It's just a game of psychology. A game of psychology, and these people, especially in the UK, they love playing their psychology. They love it. So, this is not a drone to a lot of people. This is like some sort of uh, aircraft. And it's very easy when you've got the cover on this, and this is on, to let people feel the weight of that, and just say, like, you know, this. and the propeller's on the back, so it has all the right uh, things for being safe. Even if this was a bump into you, it's a big chunk of foam, it ain't gonna hurt you, it'd be like being hit with a, with a pillar. Hit with a pillar if you, that hurts you or whatever, and then you're a bit of a, yeah, you yeah, know what I'm saying. Quit it, dear sakes. I got hit, I thought it might hit me, I saw it and I panicked. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, so that's what we're going to do, and we're going to get out there and have a little fly of this, um, not in this video, because we're going to go through all this stuff first, uh, and, and get up in the air, because I'm being a bit, I'm going a bit nuts, just sat around, not doing anything. Yeah, and I just wanted to point out as well, you see the antenna here, this little tiny stubby, now the reason why I use it is because uh, it's just a standard low DBI. And as this thing rolls around a bit and does a lot, you don't want um, like a high DBI antenna on there. I mean, no, I should refrain myself from saying that. You can use whatever antenna you like. But on this setup, I'm using this little antenna here because it's gonna, it's got a, um, um, a, a, a radiation, um, more like an apple rather than like a donut, rather than like something that's being compressed to squish out further. It's more just like all around. So above it's gonna be a little bit better, you know, and below a little bit better and just more all around. So that's what I'm using on this anyway. And hopefully this is gonna see me good. I'm not gonna use above the legal limit in my country. I don't feel that you need to if you've got a decent receive antenna and a decent receiver. Um, and we're going to try out as well, because I showed you the first part, didn't I, of the um, RSSI tracker type system. Uh, yeah, and we're going to try that out as well, because that just uses one antenna. I'm going to put a 10 dBi antenna on that, and we're going to have that tracking this around. So quite a bit on the first video of this being flown, once it's been set up again. On this side here, I'm using this uh, TBS. I use TBS uh, receivers because I have the TBS radio, of course. If you're flying around buildings and stuff, you're going to get reflections anyway because of the, uh, the amount of power that you're using. Mm, you know, if I'm not flying out far as a distance, I only fly 200 milliwatts in front or around me anyway. I just don't see the need for it. And if I'm flying low, I only get a load of reflections if I've got 600 milliwatts on or something like that. I just get a lot more interference, so it's just better off turning the power down. So that's what I do. Uh, everyone does their own thing, their own way. Um, and that's the great thing about all this, is you can pick it up and you can start saying, no, I'm gonna try this antenna, I'm gonna try this, antenna, I'm gonna do this, and yeah. And everything's gonna work pretty much the same. The, the differences that you might have is with a free sky receiver, you might have a serial uh, S, S bus, right? And you're gonna have a, uh, for your telemetry, so you're gonna, you're gonna need a, a telemetry for, I think it's smart port, isn't it, on the um, free sky? Where on this, it uses a data link uh, plus a receive transmit and the telemetry comes down that link. So you just need one UART uh, for transmit and receive on the, um, on the UART and you're good to go. And that's what I like about these as well. The reason why I bought this in the first place, not this particular one, but um, TBS is because of that way it connected. It was easier for me to understand that than getting around my head, trying to do a TX uh, on another 
S port on another pad and then somewhere else on the board finding the jumper for it. No, this just sorted that out straight away. It either works one way around or it works the other way around even if you can't get it. But just remember to transmit goes on to receive and receive goes on to transmit. And that's it, and your power. Of course, it's a, it's very little power, so, so that's good. You know, that, that that's good. That's the sort of thing you can just unplug from the board, pop it onto another one, and you're off again. Same with this, transmit and receive again. Uh, you don't need for the compass because you're flying in a normally forward direction, and so the GPS bearings, um, because of the way you're flying through the GPS, um, your you will uh it'll know you're flying forward all the time so when you want to turn left it knows to go left because you're always flying forward so you don't need a compass on the go so that takes out a big lot of prattling around or where you're flying from what's it like you know do you need to keep recalibrating your compass depending on where you are with a wing you don't have to uh the disadvantages to the wing i suppose over an airplane is you're going to get more travel up and down like this right the airplane's got a uh, fuselage it's got a tail on the back and stabilizers and so it's going to be more stable uh, like that but uh, the airplane is not as much to fun or play around with for fun or just for doing loops and spins and all this sort of stuff as uh, the rolls sorry spins can you just really do spins if you want go up high and start spinning down to the ground i've done that in a few videos and just poured up just at the end um and it's fantastic and that's what i do like about flying around with these things we've got our esc on there already this is the same esc <clears throat> is what's been on here since i decided oh i don't need to use a big chunky one on here and learn how to set up the analog uh up top and then down and no just uh multi-shot on there um, and it's just a 30mm ESC. I could do with taking one off and just sticking one inside here, but I just found that, just kept it cool. Never had a problem with this thing. Got it stuck in a tree once for about two weeks. You can see all the, where the water got in. Oh, see where the water got in, the staining. That's because it was up in a tree for a couple of weeks and then it became really, really blowy. And my mate said to me, he says, go and have a look, see this I said, nah, I've lost that. I was gutted, I was like, no, nah, I've lost it, mate. I, someone else would have found it. And then it says again, they say, go out, go and have a look. And I thought, well, go on, it's really windy. Go on, go and have a look. And, you know, I was looking around down the bottom of the tree and I found it. I found it down the bottom of the tree. I'm really glad I went out and looked for it. There. So, yeah. We've got some LEDs as well. So we go through the LED setup. Let me just turn over. You can see the ones there on the back. And they've also got, uh, we've also got a couple of LEDs on the front. Oh, underneath. Yeah. Put this stuff in a more permanent way. And we're going to get onto the INAV and start setting up the INAV. I've got to set it up with it in there because we're going to get things going. Uh, and that's going to be the next part of the project. Let's get that down there. Right, guys. So what we're going to do now then is we're going to put the software onto the board. So we're going to put the firmware on, I should say, onto the board and use INAV. Now this is just going to bring us in. We're going to look, we're just going to check COM6 good we're all good just check that uh, now it doesn't look like um, it's got the gyro and accelerometer configured so I must have some information for that somewhere but I'm just going to go into the CLI and I'm going to do this default default okay and I'm just going to copy this because all I can save myself a bit of time with is um, is doing the alignments because that can be a bit tricky uh, you know when you've got stuff on the board and it's just easy if you keep your alignments and you know that your alignment was it was okay so like i say we're gonna do it i'm gonna do this and then i'm just gonna uh, i've copied that hold on a second because it's on the clipboard and let me just go into a uh, notepad i'm just gonna drop that in there Paste that so I've got that. Now on this one I can just disconnect. Because really what I want to do is disconnect out of there. I want to press the boot button, which is, uh, I'm going to try and do this with, which is here. And then plug this back in. So now we're in DFU, or at least we're supposed to be. Let me just pull that out of there for a second. Try that again. Okay, 
Okay. It's not letting us in DFU now. I'll just take that out again. Right, it recognises it there. But it doesn't allow me to. You can hear me clicking it. Click in. Ah, DFU. Maybe I hadn't clicked it hard enough. Maybe you can get bits of fluff or something trapped. And, don't know. Anyway, we're in now. And what we're going to be looking for, um, and I'm hoping that I'm online to find it, and I'm not. Let me just go for my online malarkey. I'm going to go in DFU again now. Oh, we should actually be there. There we go, still in DFU. Go into the firmware flasher. We're going to get to choose a board now. So we just want the um, 405, the um, Matic F405. I'm pretty sure it's just that. Yep. Yep. Oh, is it the SE? Mm, I reckon it might be the SE. Let me just check. Always best to check. I'll be safe than sorry, right? Shiba fine flakes. Um, takes a bit of time doing my tech. Mm, let take. So it's the SC. I know target Matic. Four or five SE. Always best to uh, just double check. Four or five SE. So we're going to have this new firmware, which is firmware uh, four. We're going to load that online. There's our firmware. We can go through the bits and pieces, upgrading from previous, blah, blah, important changes. Carmen filter, aka Unicorn filter is enabled by default. Don't know, don't know. So there's quite a few things in there, people, that were really into. I want to go through that. Um, yep. All right, so there's a whole bunch of uh, rates. Nice. So that's going to be a. have to look at those. There's some YouTube, a YouTube uh, video there to watch that about the rates. I'm sure that's going to be worth a good watch. Oh, excellent. Add proper percentage for RSSI to the Crossfire protocol. That's the first one I've seen, and that's great because uh, it does it a little bit differently. Uh, within there, and it can be hard to hard to think about it sometimes. But that, that's great. I like this. I like I like this little piece in here. Uh, oh, wicked. Add 50 milliwatt Crossfire transmitter power. Uh, I'm not, I, I, yeah, I suppose I am seeing stuff that's more related to mine. That's just because, you know, I've got the crossfire stuff. All right, well, there's there's quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of uh, updates and such. Recommended hardware, of course, that's all in there. Yep, lovely, right. So we're just going to say flash the firmware. All right, uh, note, STM32 bootloader is stored in ROM, cannot be bricked. That's a nice thing to know about your flight controllers. You can't brick it with this system. Uh, okay, that's all the normal buff there. You can read that while I'm just pressing this button. Erase the old stuff off, which I expect it's just getting rid of the, uh, just getting rid of the index rather than actually, you know, erasing correctly, like rewriting. Um, I don't know. Uh, just rewriting all the zeros or something. Be best. I'm letting it run in the normal time how long it would take to do it. So if you're running it on the computer, my computer's about five, six years old, this laptop. I'll tell you what it is it's a Dell Precision M4800. Uh, it's not a bad machine. It's the top one that they, do, that they did with its own. Um, dedicated NVIDIA graphics and stuff, and it's all right. I don't use it for anything but doing this sort of thing, and I find it great. 
got two hard drives in there, two solid state drives. One's got Windows on there and one's got uh, Linux. It's Linux that I mainly use, but there is a few apps in Windows that I can still use. I am setting up a virtual box on my Linux partition. I think that's successful. And in that, I'll put Windows 10 and see if I can run all my bits from inside that. Right, I always recycle here. It doesn't say you got to, but I always just recycle it. Just because um, it's not a lot to do. All right, so we just did the connection here. Right, now we're going to choose what it is we're going to be doing. In this instance, uh, before we went for the quad, this instance, we're going to go to the airplane uh, without a tail or a wing, delta, etc. Uh, a tail, with a, yeah. Well, you can have an airplane with a tail, but we're having the one without a tail. So there's a little reboot, it's all good. I wish that had just been snug in the picture, but... Uh, right, okay, so we don't have... Um, the accelerometer calibrated yet, that's why it's sat all skewy, even low, to be honest with you, it's sat all skewy on the bench. So, if we just pop that down, if I just push that, uh, we'll go there and doctor, just push that down, so it's not quite level, I've got that flat there and it should be level, but on the thing there it's not level, so, just, now that I do that, I'll try and keep that one in the same, boom, level, not level, but what we do have is, some bits and pieces in this that we can now just add into there. So instead of us having to go through this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this out. Where is it? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just uh, just looking through and just talking it from here where things are. So, oh, where's it gone? Come here. Come here, come here, come here. I can't even, I don't even know if they were in for the other one. I presume they were. Can't see any alignment stuff. Okay, well we might have fluffed that then. We might have to go through the alignment. Never mind. Let me just get rid of that. Don't bother saving. We don't need all that stuff. All right then. So we need to go into calibration. And one of the first things we're going to do then is calibrate our accelerometer. And well, we're going to want that anyway. So. Right guys, so what we're going to want to do then is we're going to want to do this calibration. So, we are going to just set something up here. Just, oh, God blimey. Just a little bit. Uh, I just want to put this on something that I know is relatively flat. It doesn't have to be exactly flat. We could do it being sort of relatively flat and... Uh, that might do it. I don't think it is. It's already on a slant. Here we go. We're going to put this on here. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because why are we doing this? Did I just lose the connection? That's not going to be very good. So let me just check that we can move this around without it going wrong. All right, so, because we're going to be able to do all this. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the calibration. Okay, so it's going to say there, please place the flight controller in a position showed in image, then press calibrate button again. Repeat for each of six position. Keep, a sta keep it stable during calibration. Which means you're better off having it just flat and left there rather than trying to do it, shake it around, holding it or something, just... Let it go flat, and even if it's slightly wobbly, slightly not flat, it's better than having it doing this. All right. So on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm literally just going to push it on there like this, and just hold that down, just while I press this button. If I get something that doesn't look as weird as my finger, there we go. So I'm going to go OK there, and then I'm going to go into step one, which is this one which is upright like this, I'm only going to press this calibrate. So it's processing that where it is. But all right, it doesn't. Let's just hold it as still as possible. For some reason, we're not getting a, it says the accelerometer calibration finished, which is really weird. 
All right, so that's not doing it. All right, that's not actually doing the accelerometer calibration because I just pressed that a couple of times. It wasn't doing it. So let's just try that again. No, nope, this should have lit up blue. Something's a little bit wrong. So let's just go into setup. Could be something to do with the, the connection here. There's a good possibility it is. I don't think this may be the best. This is a very old connector, but it's all I've got really. I mean, I'm not, just not made of connectors. All right, that seems semi-tight. Pull my laptop a bit closer, see if that'll help. Uh, right, so let's go back into the calibration. Now we're gonna start that calibration of this. Just, I just goofed it a bit there, but never mind. I was near enough down. Um, I'm going to just turn that over because it wants to be upside down now. Now this is where the bit that I said about not moving it around and that you want to be just as careful as you can. Well, we're just going to do our best here because of the way this is. I'm trying not to move. Okay. Ah, we've lost it. Yeah, we're going to damage it, keep doing that. So one of the things you've got to make sure is that you've got a good, good, good connection here. And it could be down to these cables. They're very old cables. Let's try this one. This is, as you can see, look, it's quite an old cable again. This one's actually got bits missing out of it, but it's got a nice screen around it, so it's probably a better quality. I'm trying to see if there's a brand on it. There isn't. I don't have a thing open. Let's see if this is any better. I don't want to mess this up. I don't want to mess it up. Let's just hope that even though it looks like it's a load of rubbish, it'll... Uh, It'll get us through. All right, let's get back into that calibration. I'm just gonna leave it flat just there for a second. Just gonna uh, bring this down here. All right, I'm just gonna hold it like that and press the calibrate thing again. So we can do it this time. Uh, to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter which way around you do this. It's like it knows. You watch, I'm going to do it like this. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to on purpose do it the wrong way. See, it knew. It just knew. And I do it like that. It says you've got to do it in order. But you don't have to be, you can rebel. You can do it. But you have a bloody hard your chin. You can probably see I'm shaking a little bit. It's not going to do any good, is it? And of course, if you do it in a specific order, you'll at least know what you've done when you've done it. Right now. Not quite sure if I've done this one already. Yep, turns out I have. What about this one? Uh, yeah, probably done that as well. It's gonna be the most awkward ones I haven't done now, isn't it? So, uh, upside down, of course, that's gonna be an awkward one. So I'm just gonna hold that like, sort of levelish that I can see. What I'd probably say is, you know, all right, but I am shaking a bit, but I'm just going to hope that it all do just do a bit of an average. Uh, now we need it nose diving. That's why this could come in handy. So we just put it on the edge of that. And between these being roughly accurate and the calibration finished. That's what we like to see. Now save that. Whew, and just reboot and put this really thing down. All right, so that's, even though it looks the dodgiest of the wires, it's the best wire. It's the best one so far. Right, I'm just gonna put that light down because it's just gonna make my life easier. Be nice if it was the other way around, wouldn't it, just for aesthetics. Uh, oh well, can't have everything. We can do that then. All right, then. so let's see what else we got then. So we got our calibration. We can't do a compass yet. Well, we're not going to use a compass on a wing, so we don't have to do that. That's great. We never have to think about that out in the field. 
the compass because the uh, the wing and the GPS will you know the, the wing knows it's going forward because it's you know forward flight and uh, the GPS will be able to see by that forward flight uh, its data uh, we're all good it just makes it really really easy so yeah we're going to look on here and we're going to go for an airplane because it is airplane it is a flying wing it is and so we're going to say yes please load and apply that mixer right let's just say load and apply it all right so we're reboot and we're back in okie dokie now what we're going to do now is uh we're going to look for a um we're going to look for our, uh, our our mixer again, and we don't want. I do want a flying wing. Differential first airplane, just a flying wing, just a flying wing. Right, cool. Let's look down here. What we got down here? Here we are. Stabilize roll, stabilize pitch, stabilize roll, stabilize pitch, and our throttles. So we got channel uh, one and two. It starts from zero one, and you know, in reality, but uh, I do it like that. So that is our mixer we're in. We're going to check on our outputs here. Okay, so our ESC is using the multi shot protocol on this. And we can enable the motors and the servos. Not that we've got anything connected at the moment. We're not going to see anything. So here's a zero, 01. This would be 1, sorry, and then 2 three, four, and five. But because it goes from zero, uh, it can be a bit confusing sometimes when you're, when you're doing that. But don't be confused. Stop motors on low throttle. I don't know if I want to be doing that. But yeah, I do for when I uh, come in hitting the deck. I may have to set it up on my throttles. So when it gets past a certain threshold, it will s stop. Mm. Uh, so our setup, let's just go back into our setup. So we can see what we got going on here. You can see as we roll on our wing, because I see that's the, that is our wing. That's basically what we got uh, as a wing. And that's great, isn't it? Because you actually get to see. <laughs> we got our port side and starboard side. All right, so now we can now Right, our ports, we've not actually got any of this set up yet, but you can just see the amount of connections we can make. And it's pretty good. Let's have a little look in configuration. All right, so it's already picked up that we're using the MPU 600 accelerometer, uh, BMP 280 for the barometer. Uh, battery warning, uh, battery voltage monitoring. So yeah, all that can stay on the way it is. We don't need to do anything with this. We're gonna be using a U-blocks, but what we're gonna do is we are gonna just check what's going through here, because there might be some things you might wanna just adjust. And I don't think we really need to so far. Uh, right, so basically, now that's in, we've done our calibration, we've set the mixer, we know it's a wing. Our outputs, well, we might want to just connect up now because now we've actually done the um, board um, alignment. Now we've actually done the board alignment. I don't know when that happened, but never mind. Now we've actually done the board alignment, so we can uh, just go ahead and set up, we'll put it in the bird. And because we're going to do most of our alignment when we're flying, when we realise there's a little bit out, we can make some adjustments and, uh, and bring that in. Because there's loads of stuff you can do with your radio. You don't just need to use your uh, pots and stuff for turning lights on or landing gear and that. You can actually use that for doing your alignments while you're flying as well. And we'll go through that and show you how to do that because that's going to make life a lot easier uh, all around. Going to get it all wired up now. Okie dokie then guys, this is as far as I can go. Um, the, we've got the, the camera in, all the bits and pieces done, it's wired up, uh, everything's working as it should be. And so we're going to go over some of the INAV stuff. Just going to get that connected up for a second. 
That's what we're going to put on the main power. So let's just put that on. I'll put the put radio on as well. Right. So we're going to go into our right nav over there and um, get ready for doing with this. So all we can do really with this at the moment now is I've been going through with the um, setting up of the on-screen display. You might be able to see that by taking a peek over here. And you can see what I got. We just got the that part there. All right, so it looks a bit of a mess. Um, yeah, so let's just ignore that part for now. Um, so, okay. We can uh, look at our on-screen display, as you can see there. All right, just give it a few seconds. It takes a bit of time, this. I'm going a bit quicker than the, than the system. Uh, it needs arranging. There's a lot of information on there. Because there's a whole bunch of extra stuff for the CR no, Crossfire protocol for the um, receiver. I'm not using a Crossfire VTX in this, but it does have Smart Audio, which is Team Black Sheep Smart Audio. So we will be able to facilitate that, which means I can use the sticks on my radio for changing video settings and channels, you know, band, channel, and power, and even give it the ability for pit mode. Um, <clears throat> if we look into the LED strip, we can set this up now because this thing does have LEDs on it and they are plugged in, I think. Looks like it might be. Then again, it looks like it may not be as well. So let me just see if we can do that. <clears throat> Plug in the LEDs and what you might see is the LEDs come on just in some app, um, ad hoc fashion. So and this is the, pretty much hoping this is the connection for the LEDs. So the LED is going to go in there, just make sure our power and everything's the right way around. Because we want that to be so. Yep. Okay. So the LEDs on it lit up or done anything. You see there's some LEDs here and there's some LEDs on the other side as well and at the back. So uh yeah, what we're gonna do now is just chuck that underneath. If I don't know why I just chuck that underneath there. You gotta see it there, just leave that like that. Um and we are now gonna set up the the front two. So what we need to do is we need to start our wire ordering mode. So we're going to click on that. Now you've got to imagine that these LEDs are connected in one daisy chain. So we're going to say one, well, it'll go zero, sorry. But we're just going to say, just for the counting it now, we've got um, eight, 16 LEDs, all right? So we're going to go 0 to 15. So 1, 2, so that would really be 4. That's 4 on the front. And then we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. That's f the other 4 on the front. <clears throat> uh, and now we're going to go, um, we're going to do the back ones. And now the back ones are the, um, the LEDs that go across. So I think we can do it like this. One, 2, 3, Four, and then I'm just going to do a one, two, three, four. So we've used half of our 32 LEDs that we could use if we wanted to. So you could spoil it up with a lot more, maybe do some um, port side, starboard side LEDs flashing if you wished. Uh, right, so I'm just going to do a quick save on that. And now I'm going to go to zero. And I'm going to hope that uh, this side here is here. It doesn't matter. We're, we'll just work it out. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to go here. And we're going to put that one down as number one. As white. 
And then number two, we're going to put that, oh, sorry, let's go back to zero. <laughs> we're going to give it a function. And our function on this one is going to be a uh, color. And so for that, we're going to give it the color white. The next one, again, you have to give it a function. Uh, we're going to go color. And again, we're going to go white. The next one is going to have a function. It's going to have a color. And it's going to go white. The next one, function, color, and white. Now, let's just see. Uh, we don't have a switch on those at the moment for switching LEDs on and off. So I'm not sure. We can do it like that, but we're going to do the next one. I'm just going to quickly run through this now, just color, uh, white again. These are our front lights type thing. Uh, color, and then color, and then white again. Color and oh, white again. Color and white again. So now I've got my four. Each side at the front will be white. Just on, doing nothing else. You can change it. You can have them um, so they're blinking, so they only blink on landing. Yeah, there are all sorts of other ways of playing around with this, but really it's good for you to sit down and just play around with it. You can't brick it, just remember that. And now we've got our other numbers. And I'm just going to put these on reds for now. So again, it's going to be colour. And we're just going to go red for at the back. Um, you can put the Larsen scanner on. I don't know if you've ever remembered this show that used to be on about a thousand years ago. It was called uh, uh, Night Rider. It had a car in it called Kit, which had a little... So a little string of LEDs on the front, uh, and they would just go up and down, up and down, run through the LEDs, got a Larson scanner. So you could do it like that if you really wanted to. Again, I'm just going to carry on going colour. First of all, you just got to see if we've arranged them and set them out correctly. Uh, red again. The colour. And this is one of the nice things about when you're doing this sort of thing, is being able to do the diff all, and once you've set all this up, you can just copy your LED arrangement and copy and paste it into the next update. You know, if you've got to do a complete um, uh, complete update rather than lose all these settings now, which are time consuming, these ones are easy enough to copy across. Uh, so we're just gonna carry on there. Color, just knowing it doesn't matter, do it now and Hopefully, unless you lose your diff all, and <laughs> hopefully you won't do what I did, which is lose mine. So I've got to do mine by hand, but that makes no difference. I can just show you how to do it anyway. And that's a good thing, so. Now, the reason why I've just set them out the way I have here is because that's sort of how it looks. I mean, quite if I was a bit neater, I'd have bought 12, 13, 14, and 15 in one thing uh, closer. But I'll live with myself on that one for now. Okay, so now what we want to do is just uh, go into configuration and just make sure we've got our LEDs uh, on there. It's going to be active. Uh, let's have a look. Multi color LED strip support. So we're going to say yes, please, for that. Or just you know, put that across. Now let's see what we get as this boots up. <coughs> right, I've got a sort of funny feeling. Let me just turn off this uh, HD preview on this camera. It doesn't need to be wasting energy. There we go, just turn that HD off. I should have looked actually to see how much currently we're using. But at the back now, I'm sure you might be able to see uh, that there is some LED activity. But we've got nothing at the front by the looks of it. But we have got it at the back, as you can see, that's lit up down there at the back. But that's all lit up as white. No. Um, I've got to remember, these are daisy chains, but the first ones that get power are the ones down there. So it's possible that we've lost power up the front here. And it's only seeing the first ones that I put on. 
It's only seen the first ones that I've put on, and uh, uh, which means that the uh, the front ones may not be working. But that's all right. What we'll do then is we'll just switch that off because, like I say, it's wired directly to those ones at the back first, and then it comes through here to the uh, to the front. So there's, poss there's possibly a uh, a break in the in the cable. All right. So what we're going to do then is uh, we're just going to um, I'm just gonna clear that. Clear this. Clear this. Clear this. Clear it. I think I can do it like this, just clear it. So it doesn't have anything there. Um, and then I'm gonna change those other ones, these white ones now, to red. Just because there's no point, uh, you know, having them there and being on uh, white at the back. I'm just doing it, you know, uh, willy nilly here like this, just to show that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter which way you do this, you've already numbered them. So, so they're gonna be my back lights, red. So hopefully you can see that. That has just changed that um, to red at the back there. And we're using less power now because it's red rather than white. Not that that should make any difference to most people, but look, you see it's red at the back now. Let me just check my hand, that is nice. Nice red. Now, I know you can't see that, but I wonder if you can see it by just, if I just last and scanned. Uh, all of these. I wonder if. Uh, oh. Just put all these on. I don't think it matters which order again I do this because it's just going to go through the, the LED wiring order. So now if I do that save there, what we should see is that just traveling up and down. The uh, the LEDs now it's gonna be maybe I don't know if you can see that that easy on the uh, on the camera there. Does it actually show you anything at all? Oh it's not actually doing it anymore, is it? No. Oh, that didn't work out very well, and that's not uh, lasted that long on the last one. Let's just put that out by right there. And let's just, uh, we do a little save on that, and... Oh, what's going on? Why are they just sticking like that? Have I got more faults than that? I think this end one here is broken. This is where they're all connected, and I think what I need to do because that's what's taking it down that side. And as you can see, there's been some damage there. So I've got a funny feeling. Let me just uh, see if we can zoom into that a little bit more of it so you can see that damage. Uh, there's some damage here where I got it stuck up in a tree. So that could be a reason why it's not working the way it uh, would, ho would hope to be working. But a second ago, it was just doing that last. And so let me just see if I can, uh, what can we do there just to push that one more time? Let's have a look. Mm, or maybe we've got a slight um, slight connection error. The reason why I say that is because it's dragging on the iMap. So if I restart this, let's turn that off. I have to remember to turn that HD off again. So yeah, what I might do then is, uh, because now I can see that there is a problem, uh, not so much with that when it sort of just shut itself off, but this end one doesn't work. Um, and I got a funny feeling that's why the front ones are not working, because it's stopping here. It won't be so difficult. I'll just warm this up a little tiny bit, because there's a bit of hot snot behind it. Take it off, put another one on there. Just check the wiring while I'm doing it. Uh, 
or not be bothered about it. But I've shown you how you just wire those up. So maybe I'll get around to that, maybe I won't. I really want to get outside and throw it up in the air. Can't do it today. But I really want to get this done over the next few days. Depending on weather, of course, because uh, because the weather is holding us back a lot of the time. All right, so like I say, there's a, a way of playing around with the LED side of things. Um, let's try not to smash everything up and just take a few, uh, a little look at some of the other settings. I'm going to turn that HD preview off again because it just gets it too warm. Don't need it to be on getting that warm. Okay, so let's have a little look inside the uh, configuration here. Now, like I say, or like I just showed, I just put those LEDs on. And there are some other things down here as well. So you can stop the, mo the motors on low throttle. Well, this seems to have a bit of a throttle issue anyway, where I'm, uh, but maybe I've changed that. Maybe I need to look inside my radio for that. But I'll have a little look, see what's going on there. I don't like that you've got to go nearly 60% on a 4S battery to get some oomph out of this, um, you know, to get it to spin up, it's, that's no good. Um, so what we got here, we got a black box flight data recorder, I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, we've not got a no-led screen display on. Analog air SSI now, we're using digital over the radio, telemetry. We've got our telemetry on, yeah, enable CPU-based serial ports, don't really need that at the moment, it can just stay on if it wants to. Well, we got it for a soft serial, yeah, but what do we need it for? I suppose we could use it for changing the camera or something. Oh, but we can use PWM for that as well, so. Uh, throttle compensation. Now, this could come in handy. Enable feature of VBAC comp. Automatically compensate for the voltage drop when the battery is discharging to keep the thrust contact constant relative to throttle. That could be handy. You've got to continuously trim servos on fixed wing here as well. When flying in a stabilised mode, continuously adjust the servo midpoints so that the airplane keeps flying straight when switched to manual. That could come in handy, but I do have a servo trim on a switch, and that's where I'm more likely going to go with that, just by using it on the switch. But... Uh, Permanently enable launch mode for a fixed wing. This one's got permanently enable air mode. Um, not sure if you need that with a fixed wing, because really with a fixed wing, you, you, you're going to want to um, maybe glide. You know, maybe get a little bit out with nothing on the throttle. So you want this to stop. Uh, so when you're off the throttle, this is doing nothing. And it's great also, you know, for landing as well. You don't want that thing spinning around. Uh, yeah, so you can see, you know, look for, it for yourself and you see there's, there's all sorts of settings. This is, uh, now is this the channel I'm on? I think it might be. Boss cat, oh, I don't know which one to use. That shirt, it's too many choices. Let's see if it is. If I change that now to that and change this to, uh, let's say just channel five on that. Power level one, we'll leave that the same. I'm gonna, what we want to do is just see, oh, yeah, just missed it anyway. What we want to see is if we lose the, um, if we lose this here, which of course we have, which means that changes from there. But let's just do a quick, let it just scan for itself. All right, I just, uh, oh, 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 I'll just go to that. There, there we go. So we know we got that sorted out. That's good. And uh, and we can use our radio to change these uh, these these channels. If we can just zoom in here, let's see if we can do that. I wonder if we'd actually go in a little bit better. Let me just hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, radio. All right. Oh there, I mean I could, I don't have a chip in the back, otherwise I'd just record it. 
of the uh, there's, I don't think there's a chip in there. Anyway, so yeah, what we can do with the radio, you see, is we can just go back to that, and you we can. Oh, sorry, that way, and then you can see on there. If we zoom back in again. We can see on there that we can actually go down into uh, like features. Just ignore this. Shh. Go into features, into the VTX, where we can change out the pit mode. We can see, yeah. Uh, oh, go back into the pit. Yeah, the LEDs are enabled. Look, we can actually turn that off from here as well. Uh, I'm trying to see where we got our. Uh, there we go. And then go back. Uh, we'll have to reboot it for that to happen, but look at the VTX as well, just, um, so yeah, we can change our power, uh, our channel, and our band from there, and even put it in or out of uh, pit mode. So, let's just say, we've turned that off, you see, we've turned the LEDs off now, which we can turn back on again, and when it reboots, and it reboots, by right the LEDs will not be on, but it is on now. Isn't that weird? I just told it not to be on. So let's see if we can just go into in here anyway, uh, in iNav, and just uh, switch those off. Because remember in the configuration tab, there was a setting down here to keep it on, or to enable uh, the LED strip. And here it says, uh, well, it's got the multi-strip support and I'm pretty sure I saved and rebooted, but it didn't want to do that. That's a little bit weird, isn't it? Let's just have a look, see if it switches them off now. Yeah, it has. <laughs> and now they're back on. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, then, so let's uh, see if we can go in here then and switch them off. I mean, we can put them on a switch, that is not a problem, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So, they're on there, alright, so we can turn and switch them on and off there, but if we go into the modes, look, you can even switch these on and off from modes. So, we've got our, uh, MP, just a little bit different setup, loiter, so I wouldn't mind that loiter change, I'm going to put that on a switch. I quite like the idea of it turning itself around going the other way. Right, LEDs off, look. So now we can just add a range for LEDs off. So we can put LEDs on, um, uh, what, oh, there, there we go. We got a armed and disarmed. We could just for the sake of it put them on there. So now by rights the LED sh should go off. No, they won't, they'll stay on. They'll go off in a second. Now, because we moved this in here, because it's LEDs off, remember. Uh, and now we just save that so it's off. Just to show that we can still control in there, you don't even need uh, to be using a, dedicate, a dedicated switch for it. You might find yourself just having a particular use for the LEDs on, and you will be able to go into the programming side and configure that particular scenario that you want the LEDs to be on or off, given the position of that bar in the modes um, tab. So yeah, it's very, very good. It's very, very good software. It's a very, very good um, flight controller. And uh, even though I really do love this, I, I'm still gonna be looking at autopilot. And it's gonna be happening soon as well. Because I have the H743 wing version 2 and this is great for autopilot and I really want to play with that I really want to play with I have too but I still want to play with autopilot as well right up until um, you know we really go for a flight there's not a great deal to do here now I'm probably just going to trim up maybe the movement on my um, I'm not even going to bother do you know I didn't bother before I didn't bother when I was learning how to fly I didn't bother trimming all these down to the maximum movement areas or anything it's all the recommendations I just I did what I would hope that others can do 
he's basically just take this. Oh, he's basically just take this as the setup, and then um, be able to just fly with it, rather than thinking, "All oh, right, I've got to get this." As long as you, as long as you get these these few things right, like make sure you get these uh, these um, servos centered, right? And we've gone over a little device that you can use that no no more than ten bucks. Uh, make sure you get it centered. Make sure that you've got it. So if anything, it's going to be slightly nose heavy than tail heavy. Nose heavy is a lot easier to control than tail heavy. Tail heavy is a pain in the backside. And so you're always better with that because you can always pull back on the throttle a little bit. It's quite hard trying to push the nose down when it's trying to bind up on everything. Every gust of air that comes at it, it's trying to rise too much because the back end's too heavy. Uh, yeah, that's, 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 there's not a great deal to it. And even if you, even if, and in your radio, when you set up your, don't change anything. You know, don't change it, just do the default setup. And then everything gets changed within the software of your INAV. And that's it. Oh yeah, and the one best bit of advice uh, I ever saw written, that's when I was reading a manual for the TBS um, transmitter, the standard transmitter. And down the bottom, there's a whole bunch of hints and tips type thing. And the one that I found to be the most useful and ever since then it has changed. It changed how I went about setting these things up and doing. And that tip was to be your own support. Always rely on yourself. Because if you rely on yourself all the time, and you'll, you'll get on and do it, you'll research what you need to to get on and do, you won't have to wait for others, you won't be disgruntled as well. Some people out there will be helpful. Some people just tell you, good luck with that. And you go join it in a circle and stuff like that to, to, to get any of the, the little bits of help that really uh, would be positive, useful and get you past some of this stuff. But the best one you can do is that one where you just help yourself. You just research it, get it learnt into your head, do it the learning way and it will stay in there and, uh, you know, you'll be laughing once you get the hang of it. And then you just think, yeah, I'm so glad I went down the path of being my own research. uh, researcher. So, yeah, that's it. That's it. This is ready to go up in the air. Uh, I'm going to tweak around probably a little bit with the OSD just over time, just by watching it, having it on there and thinking, yeah, can I live with that, can I live with that? Uh, I probably might make everything a little bit smaller on there, just for instance, for me, just because it's, uh, that's, these characters and such are taking up quite a bit of the screen, as you can see there, look, but still, there's still some, uh, some decent usage there, some decent air in the middle, and I quite like that, but I might just make those, uh, those font size a bit smaller, like I say. But there we go. Right, just for that for now, guys. Um, I might do another video on something completely different before this goes out for a flight. But that's just because uh, I've got to do things as my concentration allows. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found some of this stuff useful. And um, I will catch you in the next one.